Okay, so this video is going to be your next project that we're going to work on. What we're going to come up with and create um, uh, either a catch or an avoid game. So again, working on and getting our concepts of coordinate grids. Uh, ultimately, you're going to create either you're trying to avoid something. Think of like a, you know, a defender or you know, Pac-Man where you're trying to avoid the ghosts or you got something coming at you like a dodgeball almost type game, or you're going to try to catch something. So I'm going to make mine a catch game. So what I'm going to do for right now, and you can always rename your project, but I want you to give your project a first, your first name for your teacher. And we're going to call it, I'm going to call mine catch because ultimately my game is going to be based around the concept of catching. And we've been talking a lot about coordinate grids and the coordinate plane. And so what you're going to do is you're going to create a, um, you're going to create a game where you're going to catch or avoid something. So I like, I'm going to keep Scratch Cat in here for right now, and I'm going to move him to the bottom. Now, ultimately, what we're going to do is have it where Scratch Cat is going to move across the bottom, which is going to be across my X plane, right? So my X plane, and I'm going to have um, objects falling out of the sky or fall, coming towards him along the Y plane, right? And so... To help put this into perspective, or, or and you guys always have this, is I'm going to add in our coordinate grid background, just so you can see what we're talking about as we're going through this. So I'm going to add my XY grid background, and I'm going to move Scratch Cat over just a little bit, and I'm going to keep him there. So he's a cat. What do cats like? Cats like mice, right? So I'm going to make this a mouse game. And so we're going to do some sort of mouse catching game. And so... Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of ways to get this done and make some really cool stuff with it. And we're going to uh, get our mouse to move and, or get our mice coming in. Now, the concept is the same. I'm going to have mine coming from the top down, but it's the same concept if you're having to go from right to the left or from the left to the right or even from the bottom to the top. So maybe your game is a scuba diver that's going to move along the Y coordinates and X coordinates are going to be sharks and dangerous animals that are coming at him, right? Or her. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go out and I'm going to find a sprite. And I'm going to stick in the library for this one. So I'm going to choose a sprite. Now, one of the cool things with your sprites that you guys will notice is if I hover over the sprite like the bananas, nothing happens. So that bananas is a single costume. But if I go over to my bat, you notice my bat looks like he's flapping his wings that's because there's multiple costumes for him and you can do some really cool things we're going to talk about kind of what are those cool things look like so this is our batter so i'm going to go in and i'm going to look for a mouse and there's my mouse and when i look at this look see he's got a couple of different costumes now you can make costumes for your characters and we can add some stuff so i'm going to use my mouse so i've got the mouse in here way too big of a mouse so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come down here i'm going to resize him so I'm going to change his size to a 30. That's eh, a little small. Let's make him just a little bit bigger. We'll make him size 40. There it is. That's a pretty good size for my mouse. So now what I've got is I'm going to have him so he's coming out of the, out of the top. And so my mouse is he's going facing the wrong direction. Now we'll get into how you can change directions and point him. But for right now, I'm just going to change the direction of my sprite by dragging my arrow here to put it at 180 degrees or... I could type in 180 so my mouse is pointing down. <coughs> For me, that's going to help because my mouse is going to, I'm going to have them come from the top down. Okay, so how do we make them look like he's, they're falling out of the sky? And that's what this project's all about. So the first thing I'm going to do is when I start my game. So I start my game with the green flag. So I'm going to have to put in my uh, event and I'm going to do my when green flag is clicked. So I'm going to start with my when green flag is clicked. And then I'm going to put in, what do I want to have happen? So I'm going to start with a motion block, and I want to have my mouse show up at different spots. So I'm going to set, go to a random position. Now, if we test this out, you'll notice that my mouse is all over the place. But I, I don't want them to, I want them to, you know, be falling, like they all come like they're falling from the sky. So right after I do my set, go to random position, what I want to do is I'm going to say, set my Y, set my Y, and I'm going to set it to the top of my screen. So I want the Y. So even if it's a random position, I want, y, I want my Y to always be the top. They're always going to come from the top. 
So I've got my grid here, so I know the top of my grid is 180 for the with the scratch and the pixels. So if I'm looking at my X positive, if I want to come from the right, I'm going to set my X to 240. So I'm going to set my Y to 180. Now look what happens. I hit my green start. Everything is, I've got my mouse starting in different locations, but he's always at the top because right after it sits a random position, it puts the Y position to 180. Computer is super fast. Now, if I wanted to have my mouse coming from the right side, I could easily just take this out and change this and say, I'm going to set my X to, and I want to make sure it's at the far right side, so I'm going to set it to 240. All right, so now I hit my button, and my mouse is always starting, but he's always starting at a different spot, right, on my far, far right of my screen. So I'm going to go back to put mine back to where I want it to go. But depending on how you're going to set up your game, you're going to set it up however you want it to be set up. Okay, so now I've got it set up. Now, what I want to do is I want to have my, my mice falling out of the screen for a really long time, forever. As long as I'm playing the game, I want the mice to be falling out of the screen. So what I'm going to do is use our forever block because we want to set it up and say forever block. Now, maybe... You're going to have only 50 of these mice, and you got 50 other objects that come in, right? So you could set up. It doesn't have to be. A, I'm going to do a forever block because I've got this, but I could say, all right, I'm going to have like 100 mice come out, and then once 100 mice are done, I'm going to have uh, little baby kittens come out, and they'll do 100 of those, and then we'll do 50 of those. And so you can come up with however you want to do this. But mine is going to be, I'm going to have these mice coming all the time. So I've got my forever block in here. So... What we want to do is we want to set it up to make it so that our our sprite changes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my forever block, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to set this up, and I'm going to say I'm going to change my motion block, and I'm going to change. Now, if I'm coming down, I'm going to change my Y because I'm changing my Y coordinate, which my Y coordinate goes up and down. So I'm going to change my Y. We've practiced a lot with our coordinate grids. So at this point, we should have, if I'm going to go down in my quarter grid, and my numbers need to get smaller. So 180 is my biggest number, then I have to negative 180. So I'm going to change my Y, and I'm going to make it by negative 2. Okay, now, if you're watching this, you see my guy is moving, and he's going down at a pretty good rate. Now, if you wanted to make him go faster, I can make it negative 20, right? So then if I do, I'll put my mouse back up to the top here. Stop this. Put my mouse. Oh, can I grab him? Grab my mouse. I put him back at the top. And I quick start. I moved a lot faster. See how it moves? Uh, that 20 might be too fast. So this is where you're going to come in and figure out what is the difficulty level of your game. Now, what we can do is we can also... Um, through the use of variables, say, okay, if you've played for a little bit, maybe the game's going to get faster. So like after 10 seconds, instead of changing my Y by two, it's going to change by five or negative five or negative two, right? Or it's going to get faster as we go through, right? So we can set all that up. So for right now, I'm going to make this negative, I'll go negative two. That's a pretty good speed for it. So We've got our mouse going down, but it's only happening one time. So what we want to do is we want to put in something to make it so that it happens for. So if if he gets to the bottom, I want him to go back up to the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and find our if block. So I'm going to find my if block. And I'm going to say if, remember this is our conditional. If this happens, then I want to do this, right? So what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to our math operators that we've been talking about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my if. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to drop this in here. And I don't want him to get all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to say if he gets to 179, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if my motion. So I'm going to say if my motion. And I'm going to say if my Y position, because my Y position is constantly changing. So I'm going to say if my Y position is equal to, and I'm going to make it here negative 178. So it gets close to the bottom of the screen, but not right there. So if my Y position equals to negative 178, what do I want to have happen? So 
I want to basically just repeat this all. So I'm going to have it go to another random position and set my Y back to 180. So what I could do is I'm going to take these two blocks off and I'm just going to copy these two blocks because I want to just keep doing it again and again. So I'm going to grab those two blocks and do control C. Now, blocks that are stuck together will copy together, right? So if I do control V, it just gives me the two blocks I wanted. So that's why I pulled them apart real fast. If I have everything stuck together, I can control C, control V, I get an exact duplicate of it. So now let's see what happens. So I've got my mouse and he's coming down. He gets to 180 or 178, negative 178, and he will set up and come back in another position. Right? So that's what we've got for my falling mice. Now we can do one better with this. So I'm going to show you another thing that we can do. So there's your, there it's the exact same thing. So we're going to go over this again, but this time I'm going to make my mouse move, right? So it looks like, so if we look at our mouse, he doesn't, it doesn't look like he's moving. So when I go into my full, if I go into the larger screen here, you, you can see him, but he's, his legs aren't moving, right? I got extra costumes. So if I go to my costumes here, I can see I've got a costume here. And then I got a costume here. So his legs forward, legs backwards. I got a costume. What I'm going to do is take advantage of that. And I'm going to add another mouse. So just to make it so you can see what it looks like, I'm going to add a mouse in again. So I'm going to search and I'm going to add my mouse in again. And I'm going to change his size to 40. All right. And this is mouse two. I'm going to change his rotation again, giving us a little extra practice. So he's going to come from the bottom. So it's going to be the same kind of mouse, right? Now, what we could do is we could change the colors of these mice, right? Or something like that. So I could add and change the color and do lots of cool stuff with them. But for right now, I'm just going to have them set up there, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through and I'm going to do my same when start is clicked, right? So if I go back into my events when clicked, I'm going to give him a random position, Go to a random position. He's coming out of the top again. So I'm going to set my Y to 180. All right. So I hit start. He gets his random position. I'm going to create in my forever loop. Right. I've got my forever loop created in. Now I can even copy and paste this. So I, this is kind of a, exactly the same thing. So I'm going to click this and I'm just going to show you this. So I'm going to control C. I'm going to click this. I'm going to bring it over into here. So let's get all this out of here. And I'm going to control V. I've got it in here, right? But what we want to do is I want to change my mouse position. I want to change it to look like he's, he's moving. So we're going to add some stuff right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him change by negative two. Then what I'm going to do for the looks is I'm going to go into my looks and I'm going to do my next costume. Next costume. And then I'm going to do my motion again, and I'm going to add another negative two, change my Y by negative two, and then I'm going to do my next costume. Okay, and then I'm going to do my next costume. Okay, so now... When I get this, I've got my mice moving, and I got one mouse that's moving a lot faster, and I got one mouse that is not moving quite so fast, right? So we got to figure out how do we get this, how do we get this going, right? So here's what we're gonna do. On my mouse two, what I want to do is I want to change my mouse two. And what's happening is when I do this, you look at him and you don't see his costume, right? And the reason for that, guys, is because the mouse is moving. So your computer is moving so fast at processing all the stuff that it's changing. But you don't see it change because it's happening so quick. So what we want to do is we're going to change our Y by 2, negative 2. We put our next costume. We got to say, hey, we got to slow down just a little bit so I can see this. So I'm going to do a wait. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make a wait. And I'm going to put a weight in here and I'm going to make it a weight 0.1. So 0.1 second. So a tenth of a second. 100, and I'm going to put a 0.1 weight. Then I'm going to go to my next costume. Oh, I put it in the wrong one. So I'm going to do my, let's get this out of here. I'm going to do my 
next costume, weight 0.1, change by 2, and I'm going to do another weight 0.1. Okay. Now when I hit my play, you see how my mouse is, he looks like he, this guy is walking. Now what you might have to do if you've got him walking and you're doing your costume changes, you might have to drastically change what you're changing your Y by. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to do this in negative four to make it move a little faster. And I'm going to play with changing my Y here, make it a negative four so it moves a little faster. Let's try this. Then. So we stop this, start it again. Oh, see, look, I made a mistake. I did a negative four positive four because, look, you see he's going right here because he waits. He just looks like he's chomping at the bit. So see, look at that. I got to make sure that I've got him moving in the exact same spot. So now, look, he's moving a little faster. Now, you could set and get some different speeds or get some different things going. But now look at how much cooler that looks. My mouse is actually running through the game. He's, he's actually running down the screen as he's coming at him. So that adds some realism to it. Now, there's nothing at all wrong with doing this. But this looks like he's gliding through. This is just taking it a little bit further with changing your costume. And if you have multiple costumes... You can do multiple things. So I've got my costumes here. So it shows you what my two are. Some sprites, you can have two, three, four costumes, different ways of doing it, right? Think about Pac-Man. Pac-Man, you see him chomping. Pac-Man really only had a couple of costumes. His mouth is open. His mouth is halfway. His mouth is closed. And they just, as he moved, they switch between his costumes. And it's going so fast, it looks like Pac-Man is opening and closing his mouth as he's going across. That's how you get objects to come from one side of the screen on a continual basis. I hope you enjoyed this.